Aquarius. Hello Aquarius, this is your September forecast for 2013 and we're looking at what you did last month. First and foremost, you had your focus more on relationships and your significant other, partnerships, one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationships. That could be in either your romantic area or it could also be in the work area. Now though, I'm seeing how you're focusing more on how to balance um, perhaps your finances either with this partner or it could also be you looking into investments. It's a great time for you to, to find a loan if you're looking for it. Or it can also just be that you now are hoping to grow some kind of royalties or commissions for the work that you do. Now this area is also uh, ruled by Scorpio. So it, there's pretty much uh, intensity going on here in September. And it could be good for you. It could be a good depth to kind of get in there and feel those emotions. And whatever needs to be transformed will be transformed throughout this month. Now we have Venus in Libra, and that is in the ninth house. So Libra loves it here in this sign. She rules Libra, so she's happy here. And being in the ninth house, it has to do with people in foreign places or also long distance travel. So some of you might see yourself out and about traveling here in September if you have like a late uh, summer vacation. Great time to go. Now this area also uh, denotes where you're doing research, trying to find some knowledge and higher knowledge. Uh, not necessarily just, uh, should I say, day-to-day -day superficial. Some of you might start studying or taking a class and go deeply into some material where you can find answers that could actually help you alleviate some of your spiritual needs too. We have Saturn in your work area and Saturn here is still in Scorpio, still in your career house and we've spoken about this in the earlier months and it could be a little hard and heavy to have Saturn here but you know what? He's doing you a whole lot of good. Why? He's actually refining that structure that you have. He's refining those talents. And so it's putting you to the test. So don't resist it. Even though a lot of extra work may be put on your desk, it's you actually not just proving yourself to them, but it's giving you the, the ability to prove yourself to yourself. Now in this, self-worth grows. And that is the outcome of this. It's still gonna be here for another couple of years. So we're gonna talk about Saturn every once in a while. And it's just like these other three outer planets. They're not moving very much. You know, they're going to be here for years. So we're not going to linger too much on them. But I will briefly touch upon them just to let you know what's going on. Neptune is in your second house. So some of you have felt that the landscape of your income might have been shifting. And then shifting to which direction? That's the big question. Because Neptune can create a little fog or smoke and screams and not really knowing the clarity of it. But it looks like you're being alluded to that you might be hearing some news of potentials coming in. So just hang on to it. But, but uh, make sure that you uh, affirm and then reaffirm whatever negotiations or contracts you have regarding money. Okay, because you don't want to be taken. Sometimes Neptune can do that, and it all, you know, of course, depends on which other planets in your personal chart is touching upon Neptune here. Right now, though, this Neptune is doing really good with uh, Jupiter and Saturn, so it's kind of putting something into place here that may lock something in as far as a creative project, uh, something where you can take on more of a leadership uh, role, perhaps, too, which Saturn loves to do, and uh, the universe only knows that you have it in you to do so. Uh, so don't step back for a minute. Jupiter here from your uh, co-workers area is also showing that you're getting support and acknowledgement for your, your smarts here in September. So we have those planets going on and we have Mars in your relationship house. So you're gonna see a lot more action or you might also feel that your, your uh, partner is going to want more of your attention 
this month. Uh, when Mars is in Leo, then, you know, the Leo wants what it wants, right? <laughs> so that could be you uh, coming out that way, or it could be your partner here come, pulling you in, wanting more of your focus and attention. And I believe very well that it could be coming from your partner just because Saturn's been holding you at their job site, okay? So, so heed those messages, you know, and, and do try to go fill your partner's uh, batteries, refill, recharge those batteries, and he or she will then be a happy camper in the next coming months. So let's look at where we are at, at the top of the chart here. This month we've got uh, Sun and Pluto. The Sun is you, Pluto is that point of transformation. It's like a laser beam cutting to the core. So here, September 1st, you might get some news from something that you've been working for. And for you, that's all here between the 12th and the 8th house. So it's water houses, meaning that is somehow it also ties into your emotions and, and those sensitivities that you have. It's also unveiling something that might have been working in the background for a while that may now come up to the surface. Then we have Mars and Saturn on the 9th. That might be a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, it could be a little test there. Uh, it could come from the authorities. It can come from uh, you, uh, my, yourself, feeling this energy build up. Or it could also come from your partner. Again, here's that Mars in Leo, right? And it's angling up to that Saturn up at work. So you might just hear what I just said a little earlier that your partner may say something about you need to spend a little bit more time at home with him or her. So having that uh, little crash, I see you taking a swift turnaround because Mars is also training Uranus and uh, Uranus always comes with surprises, the unexpected. And it's still the same Mars, which is square here, but it's opening up. So you might find a very quick solution to turn that conflict around and be spontaneous and tell your partner like, hey, you know, go pack a bag, let's go do something. It's just you and me, baby, right? So Uranus is always full of action and unexpected surprises. And you're going to take some kind of lead on that. Then we have uh, on the 16th, I think whatever you do there on the 14th, it's going to pay off because Venus is now happier, more secure. Uh, Venus is doing the dance with Saturn. Uh, Venus is love. It is that inner heart that's coming out. Saturn, which is the planet which embraces it, holds it really tight with those rings. And so there might be some words of commitment. Now for you here, this will be in what it is you've been trying to work for and engage to uh, as far as the romantic side of your life. And uh, the same Venus here is sextile in Pluto. So there's passion coming in here. Now that's the romantic uh, flip end of this. But on the other side, we can also say that whatever you've been working for in your career as well, might now be coming through because uh, both Pluto and Saturn are, are um, um, cheering you on with this uh, Venus. So you might just be able to harvest something that you've been working for on this whole last year is coming in and it's bullseye. Okay, so you, no wonder you have work here and relationships here and both of them wanting your attention. But you're going to be able to do the dance there, Aquarius, okay? Just try to be mindful to both ends. Then we have Pluto has been retrograde, has been sleeping for many months. And uh, for you, it's in the 12th house. It's been sleeping, uh, dreaming, daydreaming, um, kind of just like doing underground work. Uh, when it awakens here now in your 12th house, you will start feeling that your, your, your subtle energies and your psychic energies, your intuition will start waking up again and prompting you and guiding you at very important moments in life, no matter where you are, whether you know work, home, with friends, out and about, but, but this, this prompting that you get is special, especially when you start paying attention to it and then seeing how it actually has a physical breakthrough in your consciousness and how you can use it you know, for good. 
Then we have some healing taking place here on the 20th. We have uh, Venus and Chiron, so that should be a good day to kind of kiss and make up for whatever needs to be kissed and made up. Um, and then we have also where the outcome of this month, Venus and Jupiter, um, beautifully doing the dance where you're feeling that things are coming to you that you so deserve. You know, it might be some good credits coming your way um, or, or just somebody patting you on the back. And also as far as love and romance, well, that's looking pretty good because the two together in a trine, it's very harmonious and it's giving, it's abundant. So it might just be the day or the evening to take off and be with your beloved. And if you're single, well, this would really be a day, a great time for you to meet somebody new. We have the full moon, and I'm ending with that. The full moon on September 19th. Uh, the full moons are always what we harvest from the new moon, which was September 5th. So you can look at that first harvest you're going to get from this area uh, of the 8th house now into your 2nd house. So whatever you were strategizing and thinking about how you could grow your finances with investments, you might see something already here around the 19th on that full moon in your income sector. So that's what we have for you here uh, Aquarius this month and it's always great to speak with you and connect with you every month. So before I go, just want to say, listen to your moon sign and your rising sign so you get a little bit better drift of the fuller picture that's going on with you here in September. So have a good one. Until next time.